Hi there everybody and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You're looking at the underside, the underbelly of my Kenmore 158.1931 made in Japan mid-1970s. Uh, any of you who've seen my channel you know that I'm very fond of these machines because they are incredibly well engineered and they are truly some of the last great all-metal home sewing machines. Um, and the last video I made on this, I think I revealed to all of you that there's a reason why you uh, need to inspect a vintage sewing machine when you purchase it. Now, I was not able to disassemble the machine when I bought this one, but I knew that it could potentially need something. And in this case, we need one of our belts. The other belt is in super shape. It looks almost new, but of course this one does not. And when I bend it, uh, you can see little cracks, right? So that coating on the outer edge has, has uh, broken down over time. Uh, you still have the lugs, right, uh, on this side. But again, is this is this belt broken? No, you can see I'm even stretching it. It holds. This belt could run easily another year or more. But um, I am going through the machine and fully reconditioning it. And this is one of the things that I consider uh, necessary. You want to go ahead and replace the belt. So I went and was looking for a belt, and I wanted one. Uh, there are a lot of supply chain issues right now, so I found one locally in this same size. Now, if there are times when you may have a belt that this is what what we call a we this is what is called a V shape belt. V meaning the 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 actual belt is tapered. In, in other words, it's flat on one side, and then on the inner side it is uh, tapered or chamfered. You can use your you can see the little angles there. Uh, slightly, slightly uh, angled, hmm, slightly angled uh, towards the center. Uh, see if I can get some light on this to help describe what I'm talking. Here we go. Yeah, and you can see it is slightly angled, and that's designed so that it fits in the pulley properly. Um, and uh, this is a rubber fiber belt. It may, in fact, be stronger or last longer than some of the lug belts. The lug belts, of course, vary in quality. Um, and I think I mentioned in the last video, I like lugged belts because of their friction. But don't forget that uh, if you cannot find a lugged belt, this kind is fine. This is not a rubber stretch belt. No, no, this is still a traditional sewing motor belt. I really don't like those stretch rubber belts because they really, uh, they just suck power away from the motors. Anyway, this is the right size and we're going to be installing this today and then we'll get it all adjusted and put back and uh, once I'm done overhauling the machine I'll, I'll just wait till then to test it and if I need to adjust it I can but um, anyway I wanted to show this to you all and sometimes I've had people ask me about belts uh, virtually every vintage sewing machine before Oh, before lug belts came around, I don't know how long lug belts have been been a thing. Every vintage machine I've ever gotten has had a belt like this. Um, and the lug belts, I believe, came out later. But And don't forget also, industrial sewing machines do not use the lug belts. Most of them use belts like this. So that you can either go from this belt to a lug belt or lugged back to this. It's fine. What you really want to focus on is to make sure that you get... The right size belt. Now belts can vary. You can go up slightly or down slightly, but don't vary too much because your ability to adjust your brackets and get the proper tension is what matters. Okay, so we will. Uh, uh, what we will what? Well, the first thing we need to do while we have the belt off is to go ahead and clean the grooves of the pulleys. Right. So let's do that. And I've gone and got. This is isopropyl alcohol 99% I actually don't have very much left in this bottle but uh, I keep that and use it we'll, we'll take whatever I've got left here put it in my jar I like a glass jar that's good and heavy because it, it can save you problems um, if you have lightweight plastic cups those things can easily get tossed or knocked over 
All right, um, so this is a fairly simple procedure what I'm about to show you, but I wanted to kind of mention it. I think I mentioned it in, in when I'm dealing with like hand wheels. So I can start down here if I want. It doesn't matter where you, whether you do the upper pulley or this one, but of course, every sewing motor has a pulley, right? That the, uh, uh, that the motor belt is going to uh, basically um, attach to and apply power to friction, I should say. So what am I doing? I'm taking my cotton swab and I, let's zoom in here a little bit for you. And I'm basically just dipping it down in the, in the, uh, alcohol. The reason I like cotton swabs is because they typically, as long as you don't drench them, they hold the alcohol uh, and generally don't create a mess. And you do not want a mess. You don't want alcohol going anywhere else, especially on your painted finishes. Um, this is 99% isopropyl, and that simply means that there's there's almost no water in it. You don't really want water, and the because this alcohol is such a high percentage um, it's going to evaporate as quickly as possible and not hang around too long so i'm basically going to just turn this little this is the pulley on the motor and i'll just turn the turn the wheel here i know it comes toward me because the hand wheel comes toward me and i'm just holding it in that groove and you can you know just turning the wheel like this is is uh plenty and you'll see black now What's coming off here, I suspect, is there could be some motor, uh, motor oil, sewing machine oil on it. Uh, you never, ever, ever put sewing, mach uh, sewing oil, sewing machine oil, or any kind of oil on your pulleys. You don't want oil there. You want them to be clean and dry and oil free because you need the friction. And obviously, any kind of lubricant is going to reduce friction. You will need oil in the bearing or bushing of the motor, but that's a separate that's a separate thing. Now, some of what I suspect is also coming off here. I don't know that there's any oil, but I suspect the black that is uh, still coming off a little bit here on my cotton swab. You can see more of it here. I think some of this is actually just the breaking down of the old. Um, the old belt, right? Uh, plastics are not inert materials. It's not like something that's made of glass. Plastics, rubber, compounds, they degrade over time. That's why often you'll need, you know, oh, here's something else um, to, to mention to you while we're on that topic. You will see. This is the bobbin winder tire, which of course by the 70s sits underneath the lid of the machine. And of course, as I turn it, you can see there's a crack, at least one crack, probably more. And what that says is it has dry rotted as well. And uh, would it still work? Possibly. But again, this is not an expensive thing to replace. And you know, when someone's getting a, a fully overhauled machine for me, that is something that I think should be replaced and will be uh, before this machine gets a new owner. I have someone interested in it. Um, sewing machine interest is very seasonal in some ways. Some of you who sew, I don't want to say all of you, but many of you take uh, short breaks or hiatus in the summer. Uh, but fall, winter, and spring is when I typically get the most interest. There's always exceptions to that. Anyway, so here we go. So I basically cleaned out. Um, I'm still, you know, you can decide. Do you want to just keep uh, putting putting the cotton swab with the alcohol in it until you stop getting any residue. Not a bad idea. But I can tell there, um, there was some kind of rubber residue uh, left over from the old belt. It's coming clean now. Again, you just want this steel pulley to be nice and clean. That's what we're after here. I haven't even started lubricating the, the basis of the machine, but I wanted to go ahead and get the belt on. I thought this would be a good video because some of you have asked me how to change a belt on one of these Kenmores. Um, the process is similar to Bernina's, but it's always, it's gonna be even more complex on a Bernina. I don't have one to show you with the Bernina. Um, but as you can see, you can see the, uh, 
can see all the cracks. Uh, again, could I have, would this machine run with this belt? Yeah, it could run a year, who knows, maybe more than a year. But again, um, the belt, I think I paid, now I went and got this belt in a retail sewing store, it was like $22. Typically you can get belts for less than that online, but then you have to wait. And, and again, some of the places I use online, they're having supply issues, and I didn't want to wait. I have people asking me, so I went ahead and you know, spent the extra, well, I don't know, six, seven dollars on it. It's still nothing um, when you look at it, the grand scheme of things. Most of what will be charged is going to be uh, the labor. Again, all the labor and effort that's going to go into this. Uh, and then I'll, I'll probably save this old belt to make a video to talk to you folks about how to measure for one. It's a lot simpler than you might have imagined. All right, we've got this pulley cleaned. Now we're going to get our alcohol out of the way here before we start moving things around. And now I want to, I'm going to move the machine and we will uh, turn it, turn things around so we can see the other pulley. Now the pulley that you have been seeing me work on, you'll notice that it's kind of flopping. But of course, remember, I took out one of the bolts and there's no problem. Um, I left this one in because there was no reason to take it out so I could get the belt off. Now. This, of course, is the top belt that I inspected. It is beautiful. I suspect it must have been replaced at some point because it is really strong. It feels nice and rubbery. It's flexible. There's not a single crack in it anywhere. I'm not going to replace it right now. It's just it, the quality of this belt is so great. I'm going to leave it be. Uh, but it, it is easily changed because you use the same process actually this, uh, you would still use the same process to change it. You want to, again, loosen the bracket for this pulley so the pulley can move and you can get enough slack to take the belt off. So right now I'm going to take the, this belt that I'm saving and I'm going to push it out of the way. I don't want it in the way. I don't want to get anything on it, uh, grease, alcohol, otherwise. And get more of my cotton swabs here. And what am I doing? I'm doing... Basically, we've got two, two grooves in this pulley. We have the, <clears throat> the top groove, and then we have the smaller groove, right? So I'm going to go, do both of them. I'll just start with the, the large groove. And again, just, you know, just, just by hand is all you have to do here. And you can see all the goop that's coming off. That's probably belt residue. Uh, I normally don't see oil on these because um, most people never open these up, right? They usually take it somewhere if the belt needs replacing. However, <laughs> as some of you know from seeing my other machines, sometimes people go crazy with motor, uh, motor oil. I can't get that off my brain today. Sewing machine oil or grease or lubricant, and they go crazy. And they start putting it in places, just guessing at where it goes. Never do that. If you're, uh, if you're unsure, about how to lubricate or oil your sewing machine. Yeah, I can see, uh, I can actually see, here, let's get a close up. I want you folks to see what I'm cleaning off of here. Um, if you look closely, you will see, I need something to point with here. You're gonna see a little black line right there, and that's just old rubber. The rubber is not, the old rubber doesn't concern me as much, <clears throat> excuse me, as old oil does, or any kind of oil. But while I'm doing this, you know, I'm cleaning it anyway, I might as well clean out any of that. You can see it here on the, on the cotton swab. Um, and again, this is not difficult to do once you know how to get into it. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it's... <laughs> You know, I can see uh, the, the old rubber coming off. Again, just wanting to get it as clean as possible. Um, you're not polishing it. This is not an aesthetic thing, right? Oh, wow. A bunch of it just came out. Um, you don't need to polish. Actually, polish would be slick. You, that's the last thing you want to do is polish the insides of a pulley. Don't do that. You want the pulley clean. Squeaky clean, but no wax, no polish, no oil, no nothing. Um, and that's, that's the ideal 
for a pulley so it's nice. You, you, it's almost like when you have your, when you've washed your hands and they're squeaky clean and you push your hands across a clean glass and it kind of squeaks. That's when you know there's, there's, there's friction there. And that's what we're after. We like friction when it comes to pulleys and belts. Friction is a good thing. Uh, lubrication is not. Now there are, uh, there's a bearing or a bushing on this pulley and uh, there is a place to put a drop of sewing machine oil, but it is not here, not in the grooves of the pulley. Do not do that, or you will have a belt that slips, even a new belt. It'll slip like crazy. It'll be like tires on ice, and you will be unhappy, and so will your machine. Okay, so I'm just going around and around here, and, you know, again, you can decide how much you want to... Uh, uh, how much you you know want to take the swab cleaning that I'm doing here I'm not seeing much of anything left and you can even turn it um, yeah it's not not as bad now I'm getting really getting um, we can even you can push it against the swab you can pull it uh, And that looks pretty darn clean to me. Now it's time to do the same thing for this uh, smaller groove, right? Because this is where the other belt is going to go. <clears throat> and remember the motor belt, the belt that connects the motor to the pulley, it goes from this large uh, diameter. Uh, you basically have you could call this almost two pulleys together. You have the big one and the small one. The big one uh, uh, has the belt that connects to the motor pulley down below that I showed you earlier. And then the hand wheel uh, belt that we're saving, it's going to connect here. And the reason I had to take it off is was to be able to get this other belt out. Um, I kept looking for a way to, to pull it out without doing that just you know I, I would have had to have loosened the motor bracket so we, we loosened a bracket in this case this is how it this is how it went you can see uh, I don't know if you guys can see this but there's you know there's a line over here of goop uh, again I don't know if this is from a belt old grease that got spilled who knows but we're going to get it nice and clean and that's going to ensure that this machine is going to have all of the power that it was engineered for at its disposal that again is why i don't like those rubber stretch belts they were invented to basically be sort of all all things to all machines you know you could use them for machines that took a variety of belt sizes <clears throat> and while that may be a, a redeeming quality they are not great. They're not good for your machine because they stretch and you end up with a lot less power <clears throat> from your machine. You want that power being delivered to the needle and the feed dogs. You don't want it being soaked up. Think about a bicycle with a chain and instead of um, instead of a you know a stiff chain, you had like a giant rubber band, right? A lot of your effort would be going into the uh, it would be absorbed by that rubber as it stretched and you'd never actually get the power to the wheel and that's basically what pulleys are they're wheels uh, that turn the shafts of um, the sewing machine uh, and, and of course the motor shaft okay so now we have it we have got <coughs> excuse me we now have our pulleys cleaned all right it is time to get the um, the belt uh, installed and so I'm going to make that a separate video so the video doesn't run quite as long but basically that's how you get your machine set up right you don't just sort of dig in there and start going you want to make sure that you have gotten things prepped uh, po uh, properly and cleaned because you've already got the belts off. Why would you want to do that later? If you do, then you're going to have to go back and um, take the belt off. So that would be that would be counterproductive. All right, we will see you in the next video where we will 
install our new belt to get this other belt put back on. And then I'm going to uh, need to snug up and adjust the pulley again so that we can uh, uh, get everything back together. But before I do, I am going to talk about this other piece here that I, I mentioned to you all about oiling. This is not part, I just said I was going to stop the video, but now I think I'll just keep going with this part because uh, we're getting ready before we put our belt in. All right. What you're looking at here is, as closely as possible, the back side of that pulley. Let's see if you folks can see that. I think you can. Right there. All right, so if you look closely, right here, you are gonna see a spot where I'm going to put a drop of oil. Do not put a ton of oil here. Um, you do not need it, and this is not a normal place that people oil machines. You can check the manual, but I, I would be surprised if that were the case. This is a servicing place to oil, but I put two drops there, okay? Notice I did not get any oil on here, <coughs> on my pulley. In fact, a better lesson that I should be instructing here is to go ahead and do this oiling and then clean your pulley. So if you do drip oil on it, you don't have to go back and retrace your steps. <coughs> so I will correct myself there. That's okay. But now, uh, there's plenty of oil here, okay? So um, I'm, I'm really not worried about that. I, there was no squeaking. Um, it typically is not a problem. And now, we'll come back around the front. <coughs> Excuse me, the side. Now, <clears throat> Where is the other spot that you can add some oil? And again, be very <coughs> conservative with the oil. Do not go crazy with it. Right here. Right here, if you notice, as this turns, it is turning around that hub there, right in the center. How much oil can actually get into it, I'm not certain, but I'm just gonna put that one drop there. Notice I just did the one. Okay, and if you watch as this as this basically spins, spins around the center there. Um, uh, if you put too much oil, not only will it drip, it could actually fly off and get onto your belts when you start running the machine. And which brings up another sort of point. If you do that, let's say you didn't mean to, and you do this, you go, oh no. You know, you, you've got your, your piece coming around here and for some reason you put too much and, it's, and it's, you're worried that you've gotten too much oil there. Take a fresh cotton swab and mop it up. Treat your cotton swabs like little mops, right? So <clears throat> you can come in in any excess. You really want to avoid doing this, generally <laughs> speaking, and you don't want to move that little, that little clip collar there. So be careful, this little... This little uh, sort of C-shaped collar that's holding things together. But notice, I'm just going to come in here with my cotton swab and any extra I can just mop up. <clears throat> and that should prevent stuff from slinging around, which we definitely don't want. Okay, now I'm ready to end the video. Uh, hope this was helpful for you all. And if you have one of these and you've been afraid to mess with it, fear not. It's not that bad. Uh, you just have to know where to... Uh, you know, and as I've shown with the bottom tray, you've got to know where it's it's a good place to undo things and uh, where you don't touch. And this is basically it. So um, next video, we'll get these uh, these two belts, the new one and the existing one, back in place. We'll get it adjusted, and then we'll, and I'll be moving forward with the uh, restoration. Thanks, everyone.